Hi, it's Therese from Lost in Paper and welcome back. Today I have some more Christmas cards to share with you and this video today is by request. I had a request to make some Australian themed Christmas cards but there was a caveat. They weren't allowed to be tacky. Now don't get me wrong, I do love a Santa on a surfboard or a Santa in some board shorts. I have been known to have them on my Christmas cards so I think the challenge was put out and I have to give it a try <laughs> and I'll see what I can come up with. But obviously these cards can be changed up they don't have to be for Christmas they could also be changed the actual designs can be changed to suit any season so hopefully you have fun with these ideas whether they be for Christmas or not and are inspired. If you haven't been here before, it'd be great if you could subscribe to the channel. And also, if you do enjoy today's video, please click on the thumbs up button to let me know that you did. And everything I've used will be linked in the description below. Also, the link to my blog will be there with a full list of supplies there, including all the colours and everything that I use in my colouring today. I will answer any questions that you have, so just write them in the comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So without further ado, let's get started. Non-tacky, Australian themed Christmas cards. Wish me luck. <laughs> So I grabbed out some floral stamp sets. I figured these always look really elegant to me as Christmas cards. So I've got the Uniquely Creative, this is a gum leaf branch set and the Protea Flowers from Hero Arts, but I'll explain a little bit more about that later on. And I've also got the Pen Sketched Flowers from Altenew. So I thought I would use these images on my three cards and do some colouring with you today. I'm going to stamp out the gum leaf one first. Now I've cut three panels of cardstock. That these are all going to be very similar sort of layout design. That way I didn't have to think too much because <laughs> we don't want that to happen. But I thought it'd be awesome to do some no line coloring. And when I say no line, I mean you can actually see the lines today. I've just done them, done the stamping in a colored ink, and I've chosen sort of neutral colors here. So with the with the gum leaf one I thought it'd be nice to do it with the almond butter ink from Altenew and that kind of gives it a brown undertone and with the pen sketch flowers I've used a very kind of light ink which is going to be hard for you to see but it's uh, limeade which is a very kind of iridescent bright green and I'm just stamping one of the flower images repeatedly over a portion of the panel because I only want a square of that and you'll see what I mean a little bit later on when I start putting the card together. My final design is the Proteas and I wanted to stamp two of the Proteas. I've used the Almond Butter ink again, masked off the main image after I stamped it and then re-stamped, oh, then stamped the other image and I can, when I remove the mask the image that I stamped first is going to look like it's in the foreground. I want to use my Prismacolor pencils today. I haven't colored with these for a while. And I'm going to do pencil coloring on the first two designs and then something else on the third. But we'll focus on the pencils right now. You may notice that I've got a little bit of scrap paper off to the side here. And this is generally how I roll to choose my colors. I don't make my cards before I make them with you. I usually make them on the fly. I have an idea often about what I want to do and if I don't have an idea sometimes I just get started and then the ideas come to me as I'm creating. I did sort of have this theme where I wanted each card to have a center panel and that's why I've stamped these the way that I have. I also wanted to do some pencil coloring today so it didn't really matter which ink I used and I really like the finished look of having a coloured ink rather than a black ink. Sometimes it gives a more subtle look to the images. Pencil colouring is not for the light hearted. I find it very easy to use these Prismacolor pencils. They're a very soft 
wax based pencils so what I'm doing is actually laying down all the colors the greens that I thought would work really well with the gum leaf and I even came in there with the brown because if you do look at gum leaves they do have like a brown undertone but the magic really happens when you hit it with the gamsol because the gamsol helps to blend the colors together you don't have to do this uh, I find it also brightens the colors as well but you can always add more color afterwards and often I'll do that I'll do my initial laying down of colors blend them out with the gamsol and then come in with a like a shading color or a darker color and add that and not actually blend that in with the gamsol I'll just leave that as a color on top and that, it's a really easy way to add some shading so I'll list all the colors that I've used like the names of the pencils that I've used at my blog and the link will be in the description below it's just really hard I can't like put the caps off to the side <laughs> doesn't really work here but I do have them all listed at my blog but you can certainly use whatever colors you have and use whatever leaf images you have and whatever tones and just you can really change this up and get some really different looks and if you've only got a small leaf, leaf image you can certainly mask it and create a big image over a card design this one is a little bit harder to see I have because I've stamped it in the limeade but this is the pen sketch flowers from Alton New and they what I'm trying to recreate here is an Australian bush which is called the Christmas bush and it's a very bright red flower lots of bright red flowers I should say is like hundreds of them if you google it you'll see what I mean it's a really beautiful bush and apparently has a really nice scent I don't think I can remember the scent off the top of my head <laughs> but I might have to go and sniff it out <laughs> so I'm doing the same thing again I'm adding my colors I'm going to show you a whole flower here so I've got two different colors of red here a darker and a lighter and I'm using the darker color towards the center of the petals adding some of the lighter color on top and then I'm coming in with the lighter one mostly and drawing out the edge of the petal and then when I come in with my gamsol I can sort of blend in from the darkest point in the center of the flower out along the petal and then also from the edge of the petal back in towards the center and that's going to leave hopefully a little bit of a white highlight on my flower petals and I do one at a time it takes quite a while <laughs> for me to color with my Prismacolor pencils and I thought I'd keep a bit of this in real time today just to give you an idea of the length of time that it does take to do <laughs> anyway these Christmas bush flowers do have like a green limey kind of green center in them and I thought this was a really good way by using the limeade ink to stamp it out it's going to give me that no line look but it's also going to give me that kind of light green within the within the flower as well and I've bunched up all of these flowers here because I do want it to look like the real tree where there is uh, so so many flowers all together and typically the flowers are a little bit more loose and um, a smaller petal but this is the closest thing I had to a Christmas bush image but I know that there are some out there I think Dark Room Door had one released earlier this year I think it was this year anyway they have some beautiful stamps and it's an Australian company too which is awesome um, I did come in with uh, I think it's a dark grey or a sepia to add some shading and some of the greens just to do the stems of the flowers as well what I thought would be fun to do here was also color the background because this is only going to be a square portion on the panel on my card I thought by having all of the background colored around the flowers it's gonna be a lot of fun so I did the same thing now I actually added a couple of colors to my black background <laughs> before I blended it out with the gamsol and I could have always come in and added some more or added different shades these pencils are brilliant to get those different sort of layered colors together and they are such fun to use you just it just takes time now onto my final coloring image and like I said I'm doing something different for this one 
all of these images have been colored on Nina 110 pound cardstock including this one but this time I thought it'd be fun to do some watercoloring so I've got the ultra new woodless watercolor pencils and I wasn't really sure how they were going to go on the Nina but I was very pleasantly surprised but I did the same thing because I knew I wasn't going to be able to add a lot of water to this cardstock I actually laid down a couple of colors together before I added my water and I am dipping my brush into a well of water and wiping it off on a paper towel off to the side so that I'm not putting too much water onto my cardstock I don't want it to pill and between layers I'm allowing my images to dry now you might know that a protea is not an Australian flower well not an Australian native flower but it is a flower that we hold very strong love for we have a lot of proteas in Australia it's actually a native flower to South Africa and I don't know if, if, you, if you've been to South Africa it's actually very similar to Australia in a lot of ways it's um, our climate and everything is very similar our beach lines look pretty much exactly the same <laughs> it is an amazing place but the protea is actually theirs but we have a few other flowers so it's um, very it's actually in the same family as a lot of Australian native flowers like grevilleas and banksias so I did include it today because I did want to make three cards and I do love proteas now I obviously need to swatch out these woodless pencils <laughs> because these leaves didn't turn out the color I thought they would <laughs> but anyway I went with it and I actually really liked the color that they ended up but I thought I was coming in with a kind of brown yellow but it was a green yellow <laughs> so then I had to come in and add some darker greens and I also came in and added some sh shadows after with a uh, um, oolong I think it's called and that was the saving grace I think having those shadows I did have to wait for it to dry but coming in and adding the shadows with darker colors really made such a difference to these watercolor the way that these watercolor pencils look and I actually left some of the image as watercolor pencil I never added water over the top layer of them it just gave it a little bit of a different texture and I am enjoying playing with these pencils at the moment gotta say and I like that I don't have the black outline on this protea as well I think that worked really well I wasn't sure how that ink was going to hold up with the water but it didn't seem to bleed at all all right so now I'm going to start putting my cards together I'm going to keep it really simple today I thought gold would go really well in keeping with that non tacky theme and I've got some of the Alter New Antique Gold embossing powder and I've stamped out this is the hand lettered holiday greetings from MFT and I've just used some embossing ink to stamp the image over top of the leaves and I wasn't sure how that was going to go but it seemed to work well hit it with my heat tool and then I wanted to pop that whole panel up on the front of my card I added some green cardstock it's a mint from American Crafts directly to the base of my card and then I could just pop the panel up and added a few gold antique sequins to the front as well I really enjoy color coloring these leaves I love gum leaves I love those round gum leaves I forgot what they're called now right so now this is the one I'm doing with the Christmas bush I've cut a square out of the panel for the front of the card I've added a sentiment this is from an alter new set which is called um, modern poinsettia it has a really pretty font on it now I've popped up the window panel but I did want to reinsert that square because this was an Alan Hudson square die that I cut and it cuts a little border but I wanted to keep that border in place and you'll see why in a minute and then I could just pop that whole panel up on top of the colored image and then add that to the front of my top fold card 
and I did also come in and add some gold sequins and I wanted to add some more gold so I've got a mirror gold cardstock border that I added to the front of that as well. I do like how the background has some color as well. I thought about leaving it white but uh, you know I can do that next time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start putting together my final card now and I've got a sentiment from Reverse Confetti. It's a portion of a sentiment actually from the Joyful Holiday Wishes. And I'm going to put this on the Protea image card. So I did splatter that with some gold, antique gold jet, jet, ink spray. It's not jet, there's no jets involved. <laughs> and after that dried I popped that up on the front of my card and added the die cut word joy which I did in some mirror card stock and that's also from MFT from the joyful wreath set and then I can just pop my sentiments over that um, bottom right side of the image where I don't know if you noticed but I did go outside the lines a little bit so I'm covering up a boo-boo there <laughs> I also added some gold sequins to this and there's my three, hopefully, non-tacky, Australian-themed-ish <laughs> Christmas cards. <laughs> Let me know if I met the request. And thank you for joining me here today. If you did like today's video, please click on the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, it'd be great if you could subscribe to the channel. I'll be back again real soon with some more card-making inspiration. Till then, happy paper crafting. Bye.